thousand years later, their wooden castles still stand. Your deck? It's already falling apart. It's wild, right? We live in an era of advanced technology, chemical treatments and power tools. Yet the wood we build with barely lasts a decade. Meanwhile, structures from the Middle Ages, crafted with nothing but rudimentary hand tools and a deep understanding of nature, still defy time. How did they do it? Why does your beautiful new furniture rot, warp and fall apart in just a few years, while their ancient beams still hold strong after a whole millennium? Today, we're diving into a secret lost to time. A technology so advanced, so profound, it made medieval wood practically immortal. And what scientists recently discovered about these ancient structures is going to completely rewrite everything we thought we knew about wood. This isn't just about old buildings. It's about a lost philosophy, a way of working with nature that we, in our rush for progress, seem to have forgotten. Get ready, because this story starts not in a workshop, but deep in ancient whispering forests. You see, medieval builders weren't just cutting down any old tree. Oh no, they were artists and the forest was their palette. They understood the life of a tree on a level we rarely do today. They didn't just walk into a forest and clear cut. Instead, they waited, sometimes for decades. Imagine the patience required. They waited to find the perfect tree one that had endured countless seasons, grown strong, and developed character. But even finding the right tree wasn't enough. The timing of the cut was absolutely critical. They only cut trees in the dead of winter. Why winter? Because in winter, the sap had receded deep into the roots, leaving the wood dry, dense, and remarkably calm. It was a state of dormancy, almost like a deep sleep for the tree. They knew, intuitively, that cutting a tree in spring when the sap was rushing, full of life and moisture, meant that wood would die young, prone to rot and warping. It was a fundamental truth they respected. Cut it in spring, and it perishes quickly. Cut it in winter, and it lives on almost indefinitely. This wasn't just a technique. It was a conversation with nature, a respectful pause before transformation. But harvesting the tree at the right time was only the beginning. Once felled, they didn't rush the process, not even a little bit. In our modern world, we want everything yesterday. We kiln dry wood in days, sometimes hours, using intense heat and chemicals. The medieval builders. They let the wood breathe. They stacked it carefully, often in shaded open air structures, allowing the wind to whisper through the stacks, slowly, gently, coaxing the moisture out. They allowed it to air dry for years. Yes, years. Can you imagine a construction project today waiting years for the wood to be ready? It sounds absurd to us, yet it was their standard practice. And here's the truly shocking part, the mind-bending twist. They used absolutely no modern chemicals, no preservatives, no harsh treatments, no synthetic sealants. Yet, through this slow, patient process, the wood didn't just dry, it transformed. It became stronger, lighter, and almost completely rot-proof. How? Because nature itself was the preservative. The natural tannins and resins within the wood, given time to settle and mature, created an intrinsic defense system. It was a natural alchemy, a slow curing that made the wood incredibly resilient. They understood that the best defense wasn't applied from the outside, but cultivated from within. But what no one expected, what genuinely baffled archaeologists and scientists, came when they finally opened up the ancient beams of medieval cathedrals. Wood that had stood firm, supporting massive stone structures for over 800 years. When they examined these timbers under powerful microscopes, they found something truly strange, something invisible to the naked eye. Tiny, crystalline structures, minerals that had grown not just on the surface, but deep inside the wood fibers themselves. Turns out, rainwater, rich in natural minerals like limestone and iron, had been slowly seeping into the wood over centuries. Not drenching it, but gently permeating it over decades and centuries. And this wasn't just passive absorption. These minerals didn't just sit there. They crystallized, forming a natural armor within the very cellular structure of the wood. 
It was a slow, organic fusion, turning organic wood into something closer to stone. Imagine that. Nature's own concrete, reinforcing the wood from the inside out. No modern paint, no sealant, no chemical treatment can even begin to match this natural millennium-long process. This was nature's ultimate alchemy, turning wood into something truly immortal. And here's where everything started to change, where humanity took a sharp turn away from this ancient wisdom. Because when the Industrial Revolution roared to life, we forgot. We replaced time with speed, patience with profit. The slow, respectful rhythm of nature was deemed inefficient, uneconomical. And in our fervent rush to industrialize, to build faster and cheaper, we tragically killed the secret. We traded timeless craftsmanship for rapid production. Today's wood is a stark contrast to those ancient timbers. It's fast grown, often from monoculture forests, harvested immature, filled with water, then bleached, baked in kilns, and treated with an array of chemicals. We try to force it, bend it to our will, apply quick fixes and shortcuts, and still, it dies. It rots, warps, and perishes, often within a fraction of the time its medieval predecessors endured. Why? Because we broke nature's rhythm. We cut too fast. We dry too quickly. We try to compress what used to take years, sometimes even a decade, into mere days. And when we do that, we destroy the microscopic, intricate structure that gave medieval wood its legendary resilience. It's like taking a living thing and forcing it to age overnight, stripping away its natural strength before it even has a chance to mature. But here's the twist, the hopeful light on the horizon. Scientists are actively trying to bring that ancient secret back. They've begun to recreate the medieval drying process, slow, natural, respectful, perfect. They are experimenting with allowing wood to air dry for extended periods, mimicking the natural mineral enrichment through controlled environmental exposure. And the results? They're astounding. They're seeing wood that could potentially last for centuries again. Wood that possesses an intrinsic strength and durability previously thought impossible in modern timber. We were convinced that progress meant speed, that faster was always better. But in our mad dash to build faster, cheaper, and more efficiently, we fundamentally forgot how to build forever. The real challenge isn't about inventing new, futuristic technology. It's about rediscovering patience. It's about remembering that profound respect for natural processes that the medieval builders inherently understood. It's a mindset, a philosophy that we, in our modern world, have largely lost because they weren't just building for themselves, for a quick buck, or for the current generation. They were building for their children, and their children's children. They were building for eternity. Can you imagine? Building something today that will still stand strong, still be useful, still be admired a thousand years from now, long after you and I are gone. That's the true, profound story behind medieval wood. It wasn't some magic recipe. It wasn't a secret chemical formula hidden in an ancient manuscript. It was a mindset, a belief that true craftsmanship isn't measured by how fast you finish a project, but by how long that project endures. Their hands didn't just carve wood. They carved time itself into every beam, every plank, every structure. And that, my friends, is precisely why it never died. So the next time you look at a beautiful thousand-year-old church beam, or stumble upon an ancient wooden bridge still standing strong, remember this, it's not just a piece of wood. It's a powerful message from the past, echoing across centuries. A profound reminder that patience, respect for nature, and genuine craftsmanship build things that truly last forever. If this incredible story made you look at history, and perhaps even your own world, a little differently, please hit that like button. And subscribe to our channel so we can continue to uncover the next forgotten secret that modern life has buried. Because sometimes, just sometimes, the past was far, far smarter than we think. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.